So let's see. In some recent videos, I covered the uh, light sensor circuit for turning on your Christmas lights, your LED lights, these ones which are just ideal for outdoors. I've had these out for a season now and they've, they've just got no signs of corrosion at all, which is a good sign. These are the little um, strings of lights you get with the surface mount LED soldered across the copper wires and then dipped in resin. Here's the torch, the Poundland torch, dollar store type torch, that's just uh, got the little lamp in the end and I showed how to take that to bits so you could actually use it as a power supply, a, a waterproof battery holder. Um, and I've knocked the lens off the end and the um, taken the reflector out. And I roughed the circuit up on a bit of breadboard. More about the breadboard later because the breadboard is special Chinese breadboard. Oh yes. And by special I mean special <laughs> because it was kind of booby trapped. And it had me scratching my head for quite a while because the circuit just would not work. And uh, I'll cover this in a separate video because it's the first time I've come across it. And it's worth its own little video. Won't be a long video, but it will be quite, uh, it's good to know. Booby trap breadboard. Um, this is a little Molex connector. Two pin Molex connector. If you cut the little um, polarization lug off it, it's quite handy that um, in these torches you can just jam it down where the lamp went and it makes a handy connection like that because I used that as the base to build the circuit up and I basically just hardwired the circuit using some lovely LDRs from a Chinese supplier very cheap, very handy um, uh, so I put it on using a 2N7000 onto this uh, connector just hardwired together and I'm going to pot it into the top of this so that it's completely waterproof. This whole whole thing will be a complete waterproof battery pack with the light centre in the top and the little set of tails coming out for the lights. So first thing to note here is that I've used hot melt glue to fill up all the holes. You see, these battery uh, packs, these torches, if I hold this up to the camera, I'll just try and aim it for the camera there. Oh, completely missing. You'll see there's light coming in at the bottom. And if I put my hands over the bottom, you'll see them passing over that. And the reason for that is that there are clear holes through. And if you just screw this on, fill it with circuitry and pour resin in, the resin is just going to pour right down. And if you've got batteries inside, as I've done in the past, you'll find that not only has all the resin just kind of disappeared, but you've now got a block of batteries that can never, ever be removed from the torch. <sighs> So um, make sure you fill that up. Now I used hot melt glue because I didn't have anything like um, blue tack or white tack or play-doh, plasticine, anything to fill up those holes to stop the resin going down. <clears throat> Another thing I did with this torch was I put a new o-ring in the bottom that was just a slightly bit bigger than the old one because the, other one, the old one seemed quite loose and this one's quite tight, uh, which is good. So I'm going to stick these batteries back in here. That makes a nice tight seal at the bottom now. Hopefully it will be waterproof. I'm just going to stick that lamp back in and check if this is turned on or off, because it's the only way you can tell. On, off, on, off. Right, OK. Fine. I'm keeping the switch intact on this one. So I'll put that little lamp out of the way. So here's the module. I'm going to press it in. I've marked the polarity. And I'm going to press that down. And I'm going to put this uh, end cap over it and screw it down just to the point that the LDR is at the top. Um, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to take one last double check that all the circuitry in there is well spaced because once you've filled it with resin, it's a bit of a one-way trip. Okay, that looks pretty good. The circuitry stood a wee bit higher than I was expecting. I can't screw this down all the way because if I do, the LDR will be standing proud. So I'm just going to wind it up till the LDR will be covered completely by resin because I don't want any, I don't want any uh, LDR sticking up. I want a modest layer of resin to keep it water resistant because the LDR, I've found some of the LDRs are quite sensitive to moisture. Uh, it, they seem to actually absorb them and it affects their uh, resistance. I'm just going to reposition that slate because I am about to commit this permanently to resin and don't want it to go horribly wrong. <clears throat> For the output wires, I 
to the LEDs. I did. I toyed with putting a connector in the resin itself, but I thought it's probably better to keep it so that it can be um, replaced if necessary. So I left some tails out that can be cut and uh, re-terminated. So that now when I put my hand over this, the LED should light. They are lighting. Not terribly bright because a lot of light from above. So I'll turn that back off. I'll disconnect that again and I'm ready to fill this with resin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix the resin, pour it in, and then I'll pause the video um, so that we can uh, take a look at the result uh, without you having to wait for the resin to cure because that would be boring. So here's the resin, standard dollar store two-part resin. I'm just going to squirt the last remaining amount into this dollar store plastic shot glass. All very handy. Ooh, quite noisy. We'll cap that again because resin is extremely messy. Again, uh, Poundland, a dollar store plant stake. You're supposed to write uh, the labels on this. It comes with a wee pencil and a stack pack of 50 of these. They make absolutely superb resin mixers because they're nice and rigid. Another alternative to that is to use a uh, Subway uh, coffee stirrer. Although these are actually more rigid, which is quite good. So give the resin a good thorough mixing together. Resin is my go-to glue. glue. It's uh, very good, the two-part resin. I use it in prop making as well because uh, it just it's ideal for impatient people. It's very, very strong. Um, and it sets where you can get this. This is the five minute stuff. Um, you can get one minute stuff, which is actually just a wee bit too fast, particularly if it's warm weather. And then you can get the excruciating one hour stuff and the even more excruciating 24 hour stuff, which is just annoying actually. So, this is my favourite type. It's the five minute resin. So, I'm just going to uh, start spooning it down into this now. I may just end up actually pouring it out the resin cup in fact. That's probably a better idea, so I'll try and scoop this all down where it's going to pour. Resin tends to flow very well, so you have to be very careful, that's why I was suggesting um, blocking up all the holes, because um, if you don't then it will find its way absolutely everywhere. The slightest crevice it will find its way into it. It flows extremely well for something that looks so thick and sticky. So that's looking fairly good. There's a wee bit left to go in. But uh, this is the point. I want to um, unscrew the torch caps slightly just to let resin work right in and then screw it back down again. And then up again. And I just want to coat the threads here. So I'm just screwing this in and out a few times to try and get it the resin right into the threads of the cap. Looks pretty good. And now the last of the resin I shall pile on the top. And that should cover shortly the LDR completely. It's not quite flowed over the LDR yet. I may have to just cheat and nudge the uh, cap up a few more threads. Not 100% sure yet. Oh, that's it flowing right over now. Excellent, that's it right over the top. And I'm going to uh, put on every single bit in here because um, it doesn't matter if it just bulges up a bit. It, the surface tension of the resin <clears throat> tends to hold a fairly good dome effect above whatever you're potting, which is handy. Uh, it's the two-part resin is great for um, covering LED, encapsulating LEDs in things like XLR connectors and stuff like that. Um, it's, this type diffuses the um, LED light very well. But if you want extra diffusion, a wee pinch of talcum powder does the job. So that looks pretty good. Very good indeed. So, at this point in time, I'm going to let that cure, so I'm just going to pause the video. Jump cut, and a few minutes later, it's cured. 
and has taken on that sort of characteristic yellowish colour that the cheap resin does. You get resins that uh, set either translucent or clear, but this one, you know, I'm not bothered by the fact it goes yellow, it's a fairly neutral colour. So let's um, plug the lights in. Uh, now is this, uh, yes it is turned on. And all I should theoretically have to do is turn off these lights, and these lights should come on. And they did. And that's my fully waterproof uh, dusk sensing Christmas light controller. So um, now to find out how waterproof it is, but I actually stick it in the ground and just see how long it will run these lights for. Um, yeah, it looks pretty good. Oh, uh, one last thing, the connector. I always tend to recommend putting a bit of grease or something in the connector to try and keep the mo moisture out. I do notice uh, one slight issue here is there's a bit of fluff build up here um, from being out for the season and that's probably because they're quite close together and water bridged that gap and caused the slight DC electrolysis between the two contacts. The simple fix to that is to use a three-way connector instead so they're just a wee bit wider spaced and rub the rub Vaseline or I suppose silicon grease would work, I'm not 100% sure, um, onto the contacts and that should uh, stop excessive corrosion occurring. So yes, that's quite a neat result.